Hey, what's up? Not here with my quick meta guide on the Mage for TBC Classic. The TLDR of these videos is that they are overview information about maybe picking a mage or another class in the other videos in the way that I wanted to find it as a consumer. And essentially, this is in a few different sections. First, we're going to look at the PvE basics, spec, stats, etc. Second, within this PvE basics, we'll be looking at a raid snapshot or rotation summary. And following this, to finish up the PvE basics, I will briefly cover the race choices. With those basics covered, this video will present a few reasons why you'd want to play mage by discussing some strengths and then some limitations so you don't go in blindfolded if you choose mage. Finally, I will briefly cover professions and PvP, but if you want every last detail, I would recommend finding specific guides for those topics after you've checked out this video, of course. So let's get going. Specifically for PvE raiding, both Arcane and Fire are very strong and will dovetail between encounters and raids on which is slightly better. To very briefly cover this which is best argument real quick, it appears from private server logs that from tier 5 onwards when Arcane gets all its best goodies such as 2 piece tier 5 and Serpent Coil Braid, Arcane does more DPS on average when played well. But mana management is a real thing for Arcane that people will mess up occasionally and Fire also brings a buff to Warlocks with the improved Scorch talent allowing Warlocks to benefit more if they are using their own maximum DPS build that uses both Shadow Bolt and Immolate within it. This may or may not be applicable to your min-max raid group depending on the difficulty tuning when live servers release, but the short version is that both are great and many well-composed raids will run two mages where one of each would be perfectly fine. Both specs begin or at least utilize 21 points in Frost and this is to access Cold Snap to go with Icy Veins. Icy Veins is a new damage cooldown that gives us 20% more haste for 20 seconds on a 3 minute cooldown and Cold Snap allows us to do back to back Icy Veins under Bloodlust. Yep, super powerful, really does what it says on the tin. There are some fire variations that don't opt to go as deep as Cold Snap in favour of taking the AoE from Dragon's Breath and Blast Wave or for grabbing mana talents from Arcane. However, for min-max raiding, you will typically go for that juicy double tap Icy Veins ability, but just keep in mind that some fire builds do have some wiggle room here or there in that respect. So given the 21 points in Frost, both specs shove those 40 remaining points into their respective spec preference. First, let's cover Fire. Due to grabbing Cold Snap, we can't afford to pick our AoE talents or Dabbling Arcane at all, but we pick up all the standard key talents such as Combustion, Ignite, all the Crypt talents, as well as the new Empowered Fireball 5 point talent that brings our Fireball scaling way up. For Arcane, you will feel very similar with the points we took in early Classic WoW if you're doing Mage in Molten Core for example, we're grabbing Presence of Mind, Arcane Power, a bunch of mana talents to keep us spamming Arcane Blast as much as possible, and also grabbing the new talents Spell Power, which makes Crit even more appealing, and Mind Mastery, which actually means we care about Intellect for both damage and our mana regen. And to touch on that very briefly, there are some changes in 2.4 that essentially changes how mana regen works and as you gain more intellect you're actually gaining more mana per point of spirit in regards to your mana regen. So actually it's a really impactful stat when it comes to arcane and how arcane blast works. With that said we're nicely segued into stats which of course was not intentional. Fire has a simpler time with stats. You're interested in every stat pretty much to the same degree Warlocks are, assuming you're playing double veins. That sounds pretty gross as a phrase, kinda like we're specking our puny mage into bodybuilding, but I like it. Let's keep it as an official term. Many of these secondary stats will be dynamic in value depending on the gear you're wearing, but as a very generic idea, you're very interested in spell haste once you're hit capped which of course is our number one priority in regards to that hit cap. This is partly due to the haste changes in 2.4, which means that spell haste actually affects the global cooldown for spellcasters, 
as well as just the car's speed itself, and also due to the fact it is less rating per point than crit. As such, we're going to prefer haste to crit, while spell damage is of course our bread and butter stat. However, as I say that, it's worth noting that for fire, spell damage can sometimes sim less per point than spell haste if you're lacking haste or lacking drums or whatever the circumstances are, sim tools will tell us. So don't always pick blindly that spell damage upgrade at all times. Spell haste actually can scale pretty damn high in regards to its per point value for you. As mentioned though, they're going to vary depending on what you have. For arcane, things are genuinely interesting. You have minimal interest in spell haste because your entire gameplay is predicated on arcane blast gaining haste and additional mana cost once it's being spammed. So spell hit cap is our priority once again, but this is quite easy for arcane to achieve thanks to the arcane focus talent. Once hit capped, you really just want to stack spell damage and spell crit on your gear. The spicy part, however, is that your intellect is actually very relevant. Mana region gets changed in a massive way in 2.4 that I haven't seen many other content creators mention. It turns intellect and spirit rather into genuinely strong stats and for some specs like Arcane or Residruid, this is actually quite a big change. Because of this and the way Arcane Blast works by stacking up in mana cost as it becomes faster and faster to cast, Arcane actually gems for intellect in the majority of cases unless they are under hit cap or the socket bonus sims better than just going into intellect but essentially arcane is an intellect gemming snowflake spec and i know that will arouse the neck beard in some of you so our stats are understood what are we actually doing in raids to dps well there's some good news and some bad news for both specs Fire is spamming fireball once again whilst trying to align trinkets, combustion and double veins inside bloodlust. Nothing else honestly, so you are spamming one button generally speaking which may turn some of you off immediately. Sadly most casters are like this in TBC and this is the case with arcane too. Arcane once again though, due to the mana aspect of spamming arcane blast, does require some management. So whilst you're trying to spam the one button, the game will eventually tell you No mana. You have no mana, bitch. You have so no in which mana! case you will opt to use some frost bolts whilst you regen mana. Notably, there are some damage cycles that people recommend, such as three arcane blasts into three frost bolts, rinse repeat, which can work in a general sense and under circumstances, but generally it will largely depend on just player judgment and comfort with the mana management and of course those things in relation to the encounter itself. So the benefit to this playstyle, whilst it is largely spamming one button, in the case of Arcane, you at least have quite a nuanced way of dealing with this one button spam. Before we get to mashing our favorite key over and over though, what race is the best choice? Well, for PvE on Horde side, it's pretty clear cut. Troll is the best choice, and whilst I haven't checked explicitly, I'm quite confident that it's the top race choice for either faction if you are set on hunting absolute number one logs. Berserking, alongside the wealth of cooldowns and trinkets mages have access to, is just a critical mass of pumping. <coughs> Alliance side, there are two choices, but there is a clear choice provided you have an absolutely min-maxed composition. Draenei is great for 1% spell hit, assuming there is no other Draenei mage, shaman or priest in the group. However, a min-maxed comp will typically have a shaman in your group, and if you're on alliance side, that can only mean a Draenei, of course. For this reason, Gnome is the quote-unquote best choice, particularly for Arcane, because that extra intellect actually matters for Arcane, or is useful for Arcane in a real way. For Fire, you could easily go Draenei just in case, but for the absolute top damage, you're probably looking at Arcane Gnome, the Lion's side. A small caveat here, of course, this is purely from the perspective of trying to scrape every point of DPS we can from the race selection menu, in addition to quote unquote perfect conditions. So just take it with a pinch of salt that we're just trying to, you know, min-max a bit too aggressively here. Race choice can ultimately be, especially Alliance side, 
is very up in the air. You can go with whatever you like. For PvP, you are going to want Gnome on Alliance side for Escape Artist, which receives a small but noticeable buff in the removal of its cast time. Drain Eye Spell Hit is kind of wasted in Arena due to far lower spell hit requirements, and the heal is kind of wimpy because it doesn't scale with spell power till Wrath of the Leech King. Humans have Perception, but Perception loses a lot of value when the enemy rogue can visually see you use it and can just abort mission compared to an enemy rogue popping Perception and catching up from stealth. Now I know you could you know, suggest many different scenarios where it actually would be useful and I buy it, but generally speaking, Gnome has, has that guaranteed little bit extra compared to the other races alliance side. Horde side is a bit more competitive, and I wouldn't want to denounce Troll at all. Berserking is pretty scary when well-timed. But Undead is probably the play, I want to say. Will of the Forsaken escapes nerfs going into TBC, and you're going to see a lot of Warlocks. So now we've covered all the basics, we can get into the meat and potatoes, and ultimately that is the question. What's good? Well, I'm sure many will want to know how well mages keep up with the perennially mentioned Warlocks and Hunters. And in short, one of the best things about Mage is that you can definitely keep up with those specs, especially pre Sunwell Plateau. You will rarely be the absolute top damage dealer on most encounters, but you will nearly always provide very strong damage no matter the situation. Both Fire and Arcane are very solid damage dealers and will almost always be in the top half of the damage meter regardless of encounter. AoE and Single Target are both strong, with Fire capable of specking in some very, very nice AoE damage for specific encounters and 5 mans if desired. Essentially, Mage is not quite S tier with Warlocks, Hunters and extremely overgeared melee specs in Sunwell Plateau, but is always good on pretty much all encounters, which cannot be said for some specs like Beast Mastery Hunter, which struggles to take advantage of cleave targets. Let's get to the real difference maker though. Mage gets so many cool spells added, at least in my opinion, and they give Mage a deeper play experience compared to what you will have experienced in both Classic and what continues to be the experience for many other ranged specs in TBC. See, mages get to escape their one button monotony in many ways. In raids, you actually have several cooldowns to utilize rather than the typical zero or one that other specs have, thanks to icy veins being added to the game in such an accessible spot in the frost tree. Mages also gain spell steel, which means they can do sweet niche rolls like tanking one of the adds on High King Mulgar by yoinking a buff from it that reduces magic damage taken by 75%. For lovers of fire and AoE, Dragon's Breath is added to the game to combo with Flame Strike and Blast Wave for real big numbers on large packs or in 5 mans if you're into that kind of thing. And for the arena junkies amongst you, Invisibility is added with its Giga Trippy animation for you to get in position and pump. And finally, but perhaps most loved by all PvE heroes, Ritual of Refreshment is added to the game. Gone is the manual creation of water and food for those lazy sloth healers that didn't go and get the mana biscuits from Alteric Valley. Now all you need to do is get them to click between their mouth breathing to summon a table that provides all their needs. Just don't be a smooth brain and forget to bring a mountain of arcane dust or you'll be back to being the water boy's answer to Oliver Twist in no time at all. Oh no god one final thing i wanted to mention is this arnold schwarzenegger double veins pumping business Amazing. quite simply you will not find a more entertaining bloodlust window on any other class combustion or arcane power plus double veins is actually nasty adding in bloodlust drums perhaps even some berserking yeah you get the point the true moment of glory though for mages is when there is a regular amount of broad aoe to do and I'll be honest, you're largely overshadowed by Seed of Corruption because many encounters don't have the right type of AoE to truly shine as a mage. However, a good encounter for this is Morogrim Tidewalker. This is one of the few fights that has the ideal AoE profile for mages to truly shine with their arcane power boosted arcane explosions actually providing a welcome reset to the heightening cost of arcane blast on Morogrim himself. Before I get carried away, I can already hear some people thinking, 
Whoa, 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 whoa. Not is a mage shill. And so far, that's a fair assessment. But we've arrived at the limitations. And there is at least one and a half limitations to being a mage. First and foremost, as a pure DPS class that's playing from ranged, you are technically the worst in this category, if you care about that kind of thing. Warlocks and Hunters are absolute pumpers. I mentioned how Hunters struggle to take advantage of cleave and AoE scenarios, but quite honestly their single target is so laughably high at times that they can sometimes be high up on the meters on cleave fights by just damaging one target. It's pretty dumb. Warlocks are not quite as busted single target, but are very much up there with Hunters. But they also have Seed of Corruption, which puts Mage AoE to shame unless it's the ideal Mage conditions like Mora Grim Tidewalker, as we discussed. Quite simply, despite being good in all scenarios, Raid Leaders trim to one or two Mages for a reason. Their moments of true glory are quite few and far between compared to Hunters and Warlocks. If you can live with that though, you can already tell that I personally am quite a big fan of the TBC Mage. Moving on though, perhaps the worst limitation for the true meta chads is that to really achieve those top top logs that genuinely compete, you will likely be arcane. Now don't get it twisted, being arcane isn't the direct limitation here. The favours, bribes and begging you have to give to certain members of your raid, that will be the real pain in the ass. but hopefully not in a literal sense. See, as mentioned, arcane has to manage its mana for the supreme pumping. However, to truly get the best bang for your buck, you will need to incentivize innovates from your druids. You may need to motivate a manatide totem, and you will most definitely have to stimulate that shadow priest. Every mana gain is a DPS gain for the mage passing addict, so be prepared for your fate if that's you. And yes, that was a paragraph of script where I tried to fit every innuendo I possibly could. I know you didn't ask, but you're welcome. Honestly though, not too much to be worried about as a mage outside of having a little bit of envy for warlocks or hunters. On that note though, we are at professions. And of course, the first thing I have to put out is... And his name is... Leatherworking. Yeah, of course. The Supreme Leader never fails us. Leatherworking will be the meta, and if you're into that, get leatherworking. If you wish to try and be in that elusive group of five people that might not have to take leatherworking, good luck to you. In that case, the next best things are tailoring for all the early and late game goodies, such as the Abyss Game Chest, Spell Strike Set, and Spellfire Set at the beginning of the game, whilst Enchanting and Jewel Crafting provide their stable bonuses with the constant 24 spell damage on rings for Enchanters, and the better gems and Abyss Game Neck from Jewel Crafting. As always, Dual crafting has a nice edge pre-Black Temple on the gems, but this becomes very minor once Black Temple releases and everyone else gets their epic gems. This now brings us to the final section, PvP. What can I say here people? Quite simply, mages are gods. We haven't spoken about frost outside of the double veins steroids that gives arcane or fire in PvE, but let me tell you. Frost is an excellent spec for PvP, as is often the case in all expansions. This is especially the case in 3s, but they are more than fine in 2s. Again, as in most states of WoW, Mage really excels in the free PvP format due to all its supporting abilities that provide control with some solid burst when necessary. Ice Lance, Icy Veins, Water Elemental, with its ranged AoE route by the way, are all huge additions to an already great PvP spec from Classic WoW. Of course, RMP or RMD, the two different variations, is the default mention here when we discuss Threes and Mage, and to be honest, it's for good reason. RMP and the less refined diminishing returns on several forms of CC chain make it a really, really top choice, and with the play skill that will be available, or within the player pool rather, once we get live servers, it could be quite a scary proposition. Mage is honestly just super good in the 3v3 format. It'd be a disservice to only mention RMP though. Mage has found success in many compositions like teaming up with a Shadow Priest and Resto Shaman which I've recently found out is referred to as God Comp by some arena players. And to be honest, the data seems to suggest it's not far from the truth 
as far as TBC is concerned. From what I've seen, it is the most consistently seen double caster comp on every private server 3's ladder. Outside of this, Mage will still find joys in 3's with a variety of different compositions, even the wacky ones, but those two are definitely the top picks as a Mage player seeking to push Glad. A quick mention on 2's, it will be quite a lot harder to succeed in 2's, but you will do well with a rogue partner for double DPS or with a Resta Druid for a more standard approach. With that said, we are at the end of the video, and if you made it here, well done, and thank you for suffering through my voice for so long. I appreciate you. Let me know in the comments though if you have any preference for which spec to do next. I've received a lot of feedback suggesting another Paladin spec or Rogues, with a few mentions of Resto Shaman and I think Feral Druid came up as well. I've got nothing more to say for this video though, but I look forward to recording the next one and hopefully you'll see it in your notifications.